Right, this is the bit you've all been waiting for, I'm afraid. Uh, don't worry, it's not quite as long as it looks. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm all for a bit of audience participation, so I'll keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, it gives me very great pleasure to welcome you all to this wedding celebration for Holly and Ben. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Philip, I'm Holly's dad. I want to start off with two big thank yous. First of all, thank you to all of you for coming here today, and especially to those of you who I know have made a very long journey. Um, if you have made a long journey, well, don't feel too sorry for yourself, because one of our bridesmaids has come all the way from Australia, so you can't beat that. Secondly, I'd like to thank all the people who've helped make this uh, organise this event. There's been an awful lot of work going on behind the scenes, so a big thank you to all of you. I hope you are all having and will continue to have a lovely day. I've always looked forward to proudly walking my beautiful daughter down the aisle. Didn't she look gorgeous? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. give it a That, that will make up for some of the teasing I'm going to do over later. Um, it doesn't seem long ago that Holly was born at the Countess of Chester Hospital, just across the other side of the city. And of course, ironically, she's been working there now. I won't tell you what year she was born, because that would be very impolite, wouldn't it? But I'm going to give you a few clues. Ronald Reagan had just become President of the United States. <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher was Prime Minister, if you remember her. Virgin Atlantic had flew for the first time. The first CD player was launched and Ghostbusters was released. Other people born in the same year as Holly were Scarlett Johansson, Gareth Gates, <laughs> One for the boys, Fernando Torres, and Prince Harry. <laughs> Prince Harry, how did Holly let him get away? <laughs> I want to share with you a few of my early memories of Holly. She was a delightful little girl who loved her dozens of dolls and cuddly toys. I, I remember well her first day at school when she sat in the back of the hall and growled at the teachers. <laughs> I remember how she loved her rescued rabbits and guinea pigs. She had loads of them and spent hours with them in the garden. She loved traditional books and magazines like Bunty and Mandy. And every week I would search the second-hand market for copies of the annual she hadn't got. I remember us going to Nottingham to see my football team. Mind you, it has to be said that I think Holly was more interested in the football's legs than the football, because she never knew who had won, let alone what the score was. I remember her and her friend, who is here also a bridesmaid, opening a frozen food shop. This was Holly's... <laughs> you can tell who it is by the one at the front going red. This was her first claim to fame and she became known as Ice Doll Hull. <laughs> Above all, Holly loved our Sunday trips to go horse riding. Now, I used to tease her about a boy who cleaned out the stables. Oh no, yes. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell you my nickname for him, but I don't, without being cruel, he wasn't the brightest button. And because of his job cleaning out the stables, he did have a certain aroma about him. But I used to tease Holly that one day she would marry him. I'm pleased to say that Ben is an improvement. Yeah. Now, tradition requires me to make some jokes at the newlyweds' expense. And this is where I get a look, and Holly starts to give me one of those Holly looks that she was famous for when I know I'm going too far, so I'll have to keep an eye out for that. But the only criticism I could make of Holly when she was little was that she was so slow. <laughs> Some of you seem to recognise that. Now, I'll give you a few examples. 
I've already mentioned there are rabbits, and these rabbits were kept in a large shed in the garden. And they were treated like royalty, really, because every week she would clean them out, and she would put old newspapers all over the floor, and then sawdust, and then hay, and so forth. And one Sunday, I was anxious for, to get out, to take her out somewhere, I could probably were going horse riding. And I told her to go out and hurry up and clean them up quickly. A couple of hours went by, no sign of Holly emerging from the shed. So I went out to see if she'd nearly finished, opened the shed door, she hadn't even started. She was sitting on the floor, reading the old newspapers. <laughs> a, similar, thank you, a similar story, when she used to be told to go up and do her homework. I would send her up to do her homework, it would all go quiet, I could think she was busy working away in her bedroom. About 10 o'clock at night, I went upstairs to see if she'd finished, to get her, make sure she got into bed. Opened the door, I said, well Holly, have you nearly finished? She looked at me in surprise and said, well, I haven't even started yet, Dad. I said, what on earth have you been doing? She said, well, I've sharpened my pencils. <laughs> Every morning I would take her to Wirral Grammar School and I would sit in the car, revving the engine, waiting to go because she would be late coming out the door. And to save time, she always came out with a toothbrush in her hand. You could always spot my car in the car park at work, because there was toothpaste splattered all over the windscreen. <laughs> but I want to be serious for a moment now. Holly did fabulously well to get into Wirral Grammar School. She then did even better to get into Manchester University to study medicine. And I know how difficult it is to become a doctor, but Holly got her degree. She successfully completed her foundation training down in London to become Dr. Hearfield, and she is now on the road to becoming a psychiatrist. I am an immensely proud dad. And finally, not finally altogether, but on this bit, um, I, <laughs> I won't be forgiven if I fail to mention Holly's other claim to fame because she was Miss Earth Cheshire in 2010. <laughs> I'm now going to turn to Ben. Now, I'm going to leave most of the comments to his best man, Tom. Ooh. But I'm going to give you some advice. For a successful marriage, Ben, you only need to know four words. Holly, you are right. Or to put it another way, Ben, when you are wrong, say sorry. When you are right, keep quiet. <laughs> Now, talking of words, I'd like to tell you a little story about another couple who got married and who coincidentally were also called Holly and Ben. And they got married and they went off onto their honeymoon. And when they came back a couple of weeks later, the best man phoned Ben up and said, How did it go, mate? And Ben said, Well, some good news and some bad news, actually, Tom. The good, the good news was that we had a wonderful honeymoon. Holiday was great, Holly was romantic, it was all wonderful. What was the bad news then, said the best man. Well, said Ben, when I got back, Holly started shouting these terrible four-letter words at me. Words I'd never even heard in the TA. What were they? Well, said Ben, words like cook, iron, wash and dust. <laughs> I recently read some advice for women who are looking to be married, and I'm going to read it to you. It said that a woman must look for five things. Number one, you must find a man who has a job and will help you around the house. <laughs> Big sign. Number two, you must find a man who makes you laugh. Number three, you must find a man who you can count on. Number four, you must find a man who loves you and spoils you. And finally, number five, make sure these four men don't know each other. <laughs> Very good. Leaving the jokes aside, I'm sure that Holly and Ben will be perfect for each other. Holly is a wonderful daughter. She is beautiful, charming, loving and intelligent. And she will make the perfect wife for Ben. 
and I'm delighted to welcome Ben into this extended family. I'm sure that they will have a very happy and successful life together. So finally, and most importantly, on behalf of everybody, I would like to wish the newlyweds every success and happiness. And I would ask you to stand and have a drink. It hasn't arrived, does it? <laughs> it's about to come, so I'll have to just pause for that. Do you want to hand that over? And join me as I toast the bride and groom to Holly and Ben. Holly and Ben! Bride and groom! Chin chin chin! Chin 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 boys. Chin chin chin. Nice. Thank you for welcoming me into the family. Uh, I don't know if you know quite what's uh, coming your way, but uh, I'm sure it's all going to be good. <laughs> yeah, right. I, can, uh, I can remember when I first met Holly, uh, I was actually out with Tom at the time. Uh, we were dressed in tweed and uh, we were smoking pipes and we thought we'd be the coolest cats in the, uh, the whole of Manchester. It was at uh, a friend's house party. And uh, we were just uh, milling around and uh, out of the corner of our eye I thought uh, a vision in purple coming on, uh, just uh, moving through the front door. She had, uh, she, had leg, uh, she had legs the size of barge poles, and uh, <laughs> it looked a lot better than that, though. Like. <laughs> uh, long, long. <laughs> she, had, uh, she had me from there. Uh, no, it wasn't real, it wasn't real. <laughs> Wonderful what wax can do, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I've gained two families today, two new families today. We've got uh, Phil and Pam and uh, Sue and Mohan, and uh, all the, the nicest people you'll ever meet. Um, and I, I just, uh, I'd like to uh, encourage you all to, uh, to just get. I don't know, the laws of your own, as good as that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Special thanks, Stewie, Sam and Tom. You've all been very good ushers. And uh, you've, you've had Tom's back uh, when he's uh, struggled a little bit. Uh, and you've all been you're all very smart, which is, uh, especially for his grace here, Stewie, he's... Uh, you're great. He's amazing, he's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Lisa Blair have also been a great help as well, and uh, provided the fantastic car, which was driven very well by Ben Nimmo, and we've had, uh, we had some lovely bunting and, uh, and lights from him, so top, uh, you know, well done to them. And, uh, and Joey also has uh, been wonderful, um, running us around and sort of I love you, bud. <laughs> last minute things prepared there. Um, now, uh, as wonderful as they all are, they haven't got, a, they haven't got a, anything on my, my new wife. Um, Holly Campbell is by far the prettiest girl I've ever seen. And uh, she's got a cleavage and pins that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, we've also got, she's also brought um, a wonderful set of bridesmaids to my wedding. Um, they're all absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> 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 they look wonderful. And Thanks, uh, the wonderful bridesmaids. Round of applause, really. More specifically, the bridesmaids have actually like been pulling double shifts here. Um, Sarah Hart has uh, made the wedding cake, which I think, well, you'll all get to have a look at it later, but uh, when I saw the wedding cake, I've never seen. Uh, Lex, as has already been mentioned, travelled all the way from Australia and then has been working non-stop producing the cakes that you've all got in front of you, which I think you'll all agree are delicious. Yeah. 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 And, um, Al uh, has organised disco, uh, Charlie's been on the music scene, um, so <laughs> I just say to the prettiest bridesmaids the boys ever seen. Indeed. Um, right, so uh, I just also thank the best man, the last, uh, the last guy to, uh, to be toasted. 
He's a very old friend, uh, he's been a great help um, most of the time. <laughs> and, uh, <he's laughs> um, but I will just say this uh, for you all. Um, he started to uh, coexist in a parallel universe. Uh, he does tend to invent fanciful stories from time to time. Uh, and he really believes the truth as well. So. And uh, thank you for humouring him. Uh, while he, uh, while he lies through his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. It's, uh, excellent. I wish I'd actually had a read through that earlier on because the pressure really wasn't on for that moment. <laughs> anyway, a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, for those that haven't met me, I'm Tom, and uh, as you now guess, I'm the best man. Joey, please oh. stop that <laughs> With that in mind, may I take this chance to say what a tremendous honour it is to be where I am today. And I think we should all appreciate that I'm one of many equally suitable candidates for this role. So that makes it all more special. Now, stood up here as I am, with this great opportunity to reveal all Ben's past misdemeanours, like his propensity of soiling himself during nights out, <laughs> or falling asleep, in the girls' toilets of Indian restaurants. It was very difficult instead to choose to talk about some of Ben's achievements. Ben's accomplished a huge amount in a relatively short space of time. When I say short, I don't mean short like the time between his breakfast and one of his second breakfasts. <laughs> Rather more than in a little under two years, he's changed jobs twice, decided to get engaged, moved into a new house, got married today, and in just a couple of months, he'll be a father. Not bad going from somebody who nearly always achieves a four-day working week. <laughs> <laughs> that said, I'm sure we can all agree his greatest achievement today is having married Holly here today. Ben yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done extremely well. You found yourself someone who's beautiful, intelligent, and an extremely competent doctor which is certainly going to be useful given the punishment you've given your body over the past. <laughs> now, Benji and I have been friends for some 15 years, and it's been an absolute catalogue of accidents and destruction. It's fantastic to see Blair and, Lear, Blair, 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 Blair and Liz over there, who I think it's fair to say have suffered more broken possessions at the hands of Benji than anybody else. <laughs> In fact, it was many years ago that Benji, Tom Nemo, and myself decided to have a swim at the Nemo's Lake. And during this, you know, we decided, well, let's let Ben run wild. And as anyone who's been swimming with Ben will know, swimming is such a secondary consideration to jumping in and splashing. With that quest for this place as much water as possible in mind, Ben decided to climb on top of the summer house and just hurled himself off. The whole sound of the structure shaking and ringing out in our ears. Blair emerged from inside, looking less than impressed at this beautiful little building. <laughs> As in such great danger of following so many pieces of his furniture on the road to becoming firewood. <laughs> Absolutely oblivious to this situation, Ben, still beaming, got out of the water and started to climb the building for a second jump. <laughs> And it was just at that moment I heard Blair say, Ben, I think once was enough. <laughs> it's certainly fair to say that whether he's breaking your belongings, eating the majority of your food, or on certain special occasions drinking his own urine, <laughs> it's certainly, it's certainly one of the best characters I've ever been lucky enough to know. I've no doubt you'll make an excellent husband and father. <laughs> I'd also like to say a big thank you to the bridesmaids for today. As we're all aware, they look absolutely magnificent and have done a fantastic job. Indeed, they're only eclipsed by Holly herself, who not only looks fabulous, but has put such a huge amount of effort into today, while still working, being pregnant, and doing all the numerous jobs Ben's forgotten to do. <laughs> I believe the ushers are also entitled to a little praise, Hello. primarily <laughs> for having arrived sober this afternoon, or at least mildly coherent in the case of Stewie. 
had a one final move. You may remember me mentioning earlier on, I had to wake Ben up once when he managed to fall asleep in the ladies of an Indian restaurant. Well, just this morning we were recounting this story, laughing away, and Ben took the chance to assure me on a very heartfelt level that from a sleeping or being sick perspective, the ladies always has more to offer. <laughs> so gentlemen, bear that sage advice in mind for later on, please. <laughs> anyway, that's certainly enough from me. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and join me in a toast to Ben and Holly, husband and wife. Huzzah! Huzzah! Jakey, which one of the bridesmaids do you want to uh, get stoned and disappoint? <laughs> all of them, all yeah. of them, all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who wants it soft? <laughs>